Hey guys, Professor Dustin here. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, finding the work done by a position-dependent force. So recall that so far we've talked about work from a constant force as the dot product of the force vector with the displacement vector. So if you have an object which goes from some initial position to some final position, that xf minus xi gives you delta x, you can dot that with some force which is acting on that object, and that tells you how much work that force did on the object. But the question is, what if this force depends on the position? As you push the object, if that force changes, it's not clear what this dot product means anymore. So take a specific case. The spring force is negative kx. So the spring force depends on the position, um, how far you've pushed the spring in. This is the compression of the spring. So as you push the spring in, the force gets bigger. And so if you push the spring in, it's not clear where you should evaluate this force in. What x should you put? Should you put the final x? Should you put the initial x? Or should you put somewhere in between? This is a typical problem in calculus. If you have a force which is changing as a function of position, rather than just multiplying the two things together, you need to take an integral. So a more appropriate definition of the work done by a force is the dot product of the force with the infinitesimal vector you're going to integrate over, and then integrate it from the initial to the final position. So the initial and the final position is the same thing that's inside this delta x, but rather than just uh, multiplying them, you have to multiply times infinitesimal and then integrate over x if this force depends on x. Recall, this is still a dot product, so you still need to express it in terms of um, the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. Or, of course, you could just um, multiply the components together and add them together to get this. But somehow that dot product needs to be evaluated first um, before you actually find the work. Uh, also notice that if this force is actually constant, then you can pull this outside the integral. You get simply the work is the constant force dotted with the integral from the initial value to the final value. But of course, we can evaluate this integral very easily because the integral of dx is simply x. And if you evaluate x from xf to xi, you return to our original expression for the dot product um, for constant forces. So our new definition for the work is going to be the integral over f dot dx. And when the force is constant, we can pull out the f and return back to our original equation. But for uh, general cases like the spring force, we can't simply do that. We're going to have to actually evaluate this and integrate over negative kx. OK, so that's an introduction to the integral definition of work, which you have to use when your force depends on the position. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.